On April 20, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil drilling platform exploded in a fireball, killing 11 workers and sparking the largest oil spill and environmental disaster in American history. The University of South Florida's College of Marine Science has been involved from the start, providing valuable insight to fellow scientists, Florida officials, U.S. Congress, and the public. Gleaned from years of research in the Gulf of Mexico, the college's data collection archive on Gulf currents, ocean geology, chemical analysis, and marine life is providing a front line of defense to tracking the spill and determining its potential long-term impact on the environment. Bill Hogarth, Dean of the College of Marine Science, recalls the first days of the spill and his team's early response aboard the research vessel Weatherbird 2. I got a call immediately one day, can we go out on a quick trip to get some information that the state wanted on pre-assessment, you know, up near the spill, but to have some pre-assessment data. Same time, the damage assessment, people from NOAA call and said, do you, would you take this vessel into the area because we need some uh, sampling from the oil. We need to have a better understanding. So there's a lot of samples they wanted. So we did, and it was quite an experience uh, for, for our crew. And the vessel's been back again to look to search for subsurface oil, which we found. We knew it. We, we found it. it. Caused a little bit of controversy with BP because they said it was those subsurface oils, but it was. The college, located on the waterfront in downtown St. Petersburg, opened in 1967 with the name of Marine Science Institute. It receives millions of dollars in research funding, and its scientists and graduate students use the college's 13 laboratories to study and track all facets of the Gulf, from ocean circulation and seafloor mapping to microbiology and the fragile marine ecosystems. So it's really, I think, it just the overall oceanographic school. We have physical oceanography, biological oceanography, geological, and uh, chemical. So it's really to try to understand the oceans and how it influences uh, the, the weather and you know things like that. So it, it's a comprehensive oceanographic school. We work closely with the state of Florida. They're located on the same campus with us, the, their research arm, and National Marine Fisheries Service is right down the street. So. Where we're located is a bunch of scientists with the federal and state government, and we just really meet often and talk about the issues. We do a lot of work on hurricanes, uh, storm surge, uh, sea level rise. The college is really, I think, it's real fame, I would say, for a better word, has been the development of instruments and, and, uh, and sensors and that type of. Uh, most everything we do, basically, we put instruments out Data is brought back by satellites. You know, it's not a lot of handwriting and this type of stuff. It's really census the development. Uh, and it's to really help, uh, I think, help understand the oceans and the atmospheric conditions and to be uh, to understand how this will impact the state of Florida and its resources. And, you know, we've been heavily involved in red tide. You know, red tide can be devastating to the state of Florida. You know, it shuts down fisheries, it shuts down uh, oyster and you know, just eating of seafood and all. So uh, to understand these processes that take place is extremely important and to minimize these impacts when they occur, to try to understand them, to prevent them. And so, you know, we are, I think, uh, sitting in a great location uh, for teaching, for research, for helping understand the problems and to address the problems as they face Florida. The college is part of the Florida Institute of Oceanography, which operates the Weatherbird. Another 19 state universities and organizations belong to the FIO, and it's this umbrella organization that will be assisting in the oil spill assessment over the long term. Lots of unanswered questions remain. How will the spill impact the marine life food chain? What will be the long-range impact of oil dispersants used to break up the crude? There's 20 institutions in the Florida uh, FIO, and we're trying to work with them. We put together a, a study plan of what we thought would take to really address the short-term uh, impacts, and but the long-term. This is probably minimum 10 years, minimum 10 years. Uh, you know, it's a lot of oil dispersants. We don't know a lot about dispersants at all. Nobody's really talked a lot about them, you know, openly yet, but uh, that's what, 1.3 or 4 million gallons of dispersants have been utilized. So it's potentially a real long-term issue for the state of Florida and the, and the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, 
So, you know, we, I feel sure, will be continually involved. The head affects the, the resources, head affects, uh, you know, just the, the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, some of the techniques that we used uh, it will be valuable to others. Uh, so it's a team effort, and I think that's one thing that we have to keep stressing. It's a team, team effort. Everybody has some expertise in this. Some may have more chemicals, some may have biological, some, you know, Bob Weisberg here has tremendous uh, modeling experience and has been tracking it uh, with his models and his buoys and all that. Uh, we have done, done a lot of chemistry that we've been working with Noah about. But, you know, Florida State does a lot of the modeling. You know, University of Florida has a lot of fishery work. So what we have to do is coordinate and integrate and make sure this data is available to both the state and federal government and to other universities. I don't think there's a doubt that the Gulf will recover. Now, the economic impact for it to recover during the time it recovers could be tremendous on our fishermen and on the economy. We have never experienced anything of this magnitude.